Hi guys, it's Kim here and welcome to Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. I am so excited to play this game. It's very much in keeping with a lot of games I've played this year, like Her Story, Life is Strange, and I've really been looking forward to this. This is made by The Chinese Room, who are the people who made Dear Esther and Amnesia War for the Pigs. I always get that title wrong because I think of War Machine and Machine for Pigs, which is a song by... Nine Inch Nails. Basically, it's a story-based game. It's a PlayStation 4 exclusive, and I'm really excited to finally get to play this. So before I tell you a bit more about this game and why I'm so excited for it, let's begin. This is Dr. Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. If the end of the world has as music as beautiful as this, you know, what you're missing out on. Already I'm sold on this. So, I won't lie, what attracted to me this to, to this game is that it has uh, been developed, so it's been set in 1983-1984 in Shropshire, which is in the West Midlands in England. And I just think, you know, any kind of end of the world apocalypse set in the West Midlands I'm sold. I'm there. You've got me. Have my money. <laughs> um, so here we are. So we need to figure out what has happened and why. So I guess we'll start with here. Um, oh, so here we are. You are here, observatory. So little tip worth all of this. Um, so I bet, I bet if I Google Maps this, it actually exists. So, ooh. I'm going to continue to broadcast for as long as I'm able. If I'm right... We should be able to pick up the signal right across the valley. The event has left markers. We don't understand it yet, but we're going to keep working to try and understand it. You can use them to find what you're looking for. The answers, they're all here. The answers are in the light. Well, that sounds ominous. I just wanted to, if she was going to say the numbers again, because I feel like maybe I should note down what the numbers were. Um, and there is a phone ringing somewhere, which, okay, sure. Uh, can I take this bike? So the thing about Dear Esther was it was set, you know, in the Hebrides, again, part of the English countryside. And it, folk, it gave you very little clues. Well, it didn't really have gameplay objectives, whereas this one does. Here we go. This is a special announcement by the Emergency Measures Committee. Due to exceptional circumstances, radio and television in this area has been brought under the control of the EMC as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Keep your radio and television on at all times. Stay indoors and avoid contact with other people. Uh... Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Do not panic and remain civil and calm. That's the British way. Stay tuned to this station for updates. Okay, thanks, Clive. Whoever you are. Um, well, it says don't go outside, but, I mean, I've started outside, so I don't really have a say in that. So at the Vallis Observatory, it looks like they've been barricading the place off. Do you know what? I love the British countryside. Um, oh, I can hear more creepy voices. I think, was that a little... Yeah, this, can you see that on the screen? It's starting to... to oh, what's that? Oh, she said lights. Oh, oh, what am I... What do I need to do? Whoa! I'm trying to do my job. 
You two will be the only staff on site for this rotation. I'm just saying, if the main gate's power fails, then there's no way in or out of the observatory. That's why there are backup generators. Jesus, why the hell are we even discussing this? Just don't you come running to me if you get locked in. If we get locked in, we won't be able to come running to you, will we? You let us worry about the clever stuff and you can concentrate on sweeping up leaves and changing light bulbs. Happy? Now piss off. Ah, so. That was unnecessary. Just because you're angry with me doesn't mean you have to take it out on everyone else. Kate, can we just talk about this? No, mm. Stephen, I'm done. I just want to get out of this place, and tonight is our best chance of doing that. You prep the arrays, I'm heading up to Tower 6. Kate. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Come on, let's get started. Wow, okay. So the clues are in the lights, huh? So that just left... I guess... I guess the lights are little, um... Story? Like, well, not story, but events that happened. So I'm presumably... Presuming that everybody's dead, given the title of this game, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. The Rapture being now, uh, uh, apologies if I get this wrong, but the American, well, not American, Christian concept of um, heaven. You know, it's the rapture is the end of the world and Christians will go up to heaven while uh, sinners stay on earth in the apocalypse. Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. Can, can I get you to come say hi? Oh, no, he's going left. Okay. Um... Incidentally, I saw a pretty funny movie recently starring Nicolas Cage that was on Netflix. It was a boring, uh, boring afternoon. Um, that was all about the rapture. The rapture actually happened. People were left on Earth. Nicolas Cage was uh, left on Earth. He was not a very nice man, cheating on his wife and that. Jeremy, come, come talk to me, Jeremy. I'm just going to double check. Oh, wow, so it's one of those old-fashioned police Well, cars. I suppose from that we can assume that they really are serious about this whole quarantine thing. If Mrs. Boughton wandered off that way before they closed the road, I suspect we'll never find her. Not until this whole thing blows over. But it's more than a little odd. I mean, this is Yorton, for goodness sake. There was no need for them to be so rude. Well, if they are so concerned that they are willing to close off the roads, I suspect they would argue that there is every need. What is certain is that for the time being, none of us are going anywhere. But he had a rifle, a soldier with a rifle, in Shropshire. The world's gone stark raving mad. I've a good mind to write to my MP. <coughs> you do that, Barb, and I'll personally deliver it for you, once this blockade is removed anyway. Come on, Barb. I can't spend all day chasing pensioners around the valley. The surgery won't open itself. I need to grab some paracetamol when we get back as well. Fucking headache all of a sudden. Hmm. Well, that certainly sounds ominous. So, uh, writing letters to the MP, that's a very uh, British activity. <laughs> I think there's nothing the Brits like more than writing a sternly worded letter either to their local MP or to um, to the papers to complain about something. I mean, for God's sake, we had a programme in this country on the BBC called Points of View where Terry Wogan used to read out people's points of view about... Um, about TV programs that they'd seen and complaining about it, basically. I don't know if they actually did anything about it or they just let you kind of bitch and moan about it. <laughs> so here we go. What's this? It looks like a... a soldier's kit bag, maybe? Hello? Who's that? Hello? Kate, if you can hear this, you need to shut down the optical array. It's using the observatory as a conduit to reach us and it started spreading its range beyond the valley. Kate, we can't afford to let it do that. It's getting stronger. I'm going to call Clive back and I'm going to force him to order the strike. I just don't see what other choice we have. God knows Clive, if can you hear me? We need help. Who are you? Jesus, get off the floor! Get off the floor! It's in the phone! It's in the phone. Oh, God. So, um... I'm guessing that there's been some kind of... Well, if it's to do with the observatory then I'm guessing some kind of, I don't know, I want to say extraterrestrial thing has happened? And it's using the phones as conduits? 
So, um, gosh, this is a very English garden type area, isn't it? So I'm guessing that we're dealing with aliens here. Um, I don't know. That's just my feeling. The game is, um, the dev devs have talked openly about their love for sci-fi. And I'm, I'm certainly feeling quite sci-fi with the, um, with the lights here. So can we activate this one? Don't be so hard on yourself. We've all had rejections. You haven't. <laughs> Come on. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. Your core idea is sound. You just got the numbers slightly wrong. <sighs> Don't patronize me. I'm not patronizing you. I think you are a brilliant man, Dr. Appleton. Listen. I'm here, right? We're together, you and me. The alignment event tomorrow. It's yours, okay? You saw the opportunity, you ran the numbers. Even if they can't see it. I'm proud of you. Is that supposed to make me feel better? See you then. Look on the bright side, uh, around here. <laughs> You're a hero. Prodigal son returns, right? <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't erected a statue in your honor yet. <laughs> oh, you can laugh all you want. But I'll bet the parish council have a subcommittee working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a little bit more from Stephen and Kate. Um, so here we go, we've got a uh, raffle in the local pub or church. Valis Observatory, say no to the Valis extension. To register your complaint, contact Barbara at the surgery. So that was Barbara who was talking earlier. Derek, you massive dickhead wanker. Okay. Emergency meeting, everyone is welcome. Village Hall tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Flu quarantine, what they are not telling us. Call Meg or Barb. So what, is there a flu outbreak? Do you know what? I am... Um... Oh, I can hear... Oh, look, I can go in. Hey, up. Oh, I'm certainly not used to this. Dear Esther wasn't that interactive, so, um... Yeah. Let's just have a quick look and see what's going on around here. But yeah, I'm loving how British countryside this is. You know, so many games get set in America and have the American kind of system, you know, way of the world. So it is really nice to see, um, well, you couldn't get more British than that, a British country pub and British bus stops. <laughs> okay, so I want to find that transmission. So I'm enjoying a game of tennis. Is it coming from here? Weasel bike? There it is. So I'm going to note this down. Zero zero one 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 seven one three one seven zero zero one 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 seven one three. So it starts at one seven zero zero one 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 seven one three. The voice of the stars. Extraordinary. The whole thing reminds me of high school. <laughs> Seeing Mars for the first time. That same rush of excitement. <laughs> Hands are shaking. Can I take this? No, I can't. There was a little bit of a... a vibration there. I don't know if that means anything. No, but I can't interact. That's locked. I wonder if I can break into the house, maybe? Lovely, uh, semi-detached? Gosh. I live in a, a village at the moment, but it's not as, uh, nice and British as this. I, I, do you know what? This is my ideal kind of house, you know, with roses trailing up the walls 
and um, ivy like that. My mum hates houses, though, that have ivy on them. Oh, dear. Do not attempt to leave. You will be detained. Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Okay. Yeah, my mum basically said that she uh, watched this film called Day of the Triffids when she was younger, which is all about sort of plants coming to life, taking over. And so now she would never have a house that has um, ivy growing up it. Which is topical because uh, the devs have said that one of the inspirations for this game was um, uh, John Wyndham's uh, The Day of the Triffids. So maybe, maybe it is going to turn out. So the pub's closed, which is a bloody British disaster. We've got the flu. Please try the seventh whistler. We'll be back in business as soon as we're up and about. Okay. Uh, all of the day, 50p. Wow, that's cheap. Fish and chips. Oh my god, there's a, a place that does fish and chips near me. It is amazing. It's funny though, when I think of kind of British foods that I could tell you about, um, when we talk about, you know, a country having a signature dish or something, my Malaysian family all say fish and chips. But it's one of those things, isn't it, where you, as a British person, I don't, I don't really eat it that much. It's sort of a Sunday treat. What is that? Is that a brewing thing? So where are we now? Oh, it doesn't say on there. Okay, I think there's a radio out that way, but I'm going to go out the back of this bit. Um, yeah, and see. Good hanging baskets. I've had to replace the hanging baskets on my, um, on my, uh, the front of my house, because they're all, they all died. I didn't water them. It's quite sunny. So there's something here. I don't know if I can get down the back there. We'll see. Oh, wow! It's an old Walkman! I found my old Walkman the other day. It does not work anymore. Private parking for customers. So you know, they uh, see me as an outsider here as well. Is that supposed to make me feel any better? You know, I understand it's difficult. That's all I'm saying. Your lot up at Vallis have never mixed with the local community. People here, they don't really understand what you do up there. Are you trying to get me to come to your church? It's not just about faith. It's about the community. Be involved. Be seen as part of it. One of them. <laughs> Good morning, Father. Lovely day. Oh, hello. Uh, Mrs. Appleton, isn't it? It's Dr. Collins. Lady scientist. Whatever next. Good morning, Barbara. <laughs> Father Wheeler. You really think that's a community that will ever see me as one of them? I can live with them staring at me. If they just stay out of my way. Okay, so a little bit of tension there. Um, so Jeremy's the local priest, vicar. I always get the, uh, the rank wrong. Um, which winds my friend up no end, because his dad's a priest and lives in the local parish church. Um, okay, another radio here. I get the idea that radios are key to this. Okay, this is different. So let's see. Here we go. looking, but it makes no sense. The area we picked the pattern up from can no longer be located on the scope. That's just not possible. You can see significant changes to the quality of the ambient light in that part of the sky. It's overexposed, like a Polaroid left in direct sunlight. Okay, so it's definitely something to do with their project. Um, and looking at the skies. There doesn't seem to be anything else out here, so let's head back out to the road. 
But yeah, as I mentioned before, I live in a little village in the southwest. And you do sometimes get that, uh, what's the word, like village politics of, because, you know, everyone knows everyone and uh, you definitely get a vibe of, um... oh, hello. Where are you going? Oh, ah, hello. I can't seem to do anything to stop them. I think it's like a guiding light. Um, so you are here. Oh, what is that? So there's some little marks on there. Okay, well, let's have a look around. Um, now, this is such a big area. I don't know how how much is open to explore. So we've got Quiz Night, Peter Pan, Stargazers Club. And yeah, that Barbara from earlier seems against an extension. So there's the light, bright light again. Oh, dead birds. I can't run after this thing. Hello? Hello? Are you going to talk to me? I'm turning my controller, but it doesn't seem to be activating anything. But... He seems to be just standing there. But no, he's not... Maybe he's just watching me. Oh, he's off again. Oh, there we go. Oh, I thought he'd activated something there. Okay, so we'll come back to figuring out what those guys do. Let's go take a look at these beautiful countryside cottages. Wow. I'd love to uh, move into a place like this. I'm growing fox, uh, fox gloves at the moment, actually, because I want to help the bees in the local area. So number four is locked up tight. Unfortunately, my garden is full of slugs and uh, they kill a lot of my plants. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have a country garden, an English country garden like that, complete with butterflies. Okay, so you're locked up tight. But can I get in through this side bit here? Big fat bumblebees. There is nothing more funny than watching bumblebees um, in foxgloves. This with a little bum sticking out, all covered in pollen. Oh, it's a thrilling life in my house, in my garden. But of course, I'm I'm moving out soon. I'm moving to Bristol. But I've managed to find somewhere that is uh, just as green. That's where I currently live, so I won't miss it. Right, there's another radio here. There it is. So I'm just making a note of all these numbers that she's reading out. The magnetic field is causing disruptions to phone signals and the rest of the electrics. There are voices on the line. It's 4 a.m. Maybe everyone is up looking at the light show. So let me know what you think. There's a there's something in this area here somewhere. Where is it? Seems to have gone. I spy a butterfly chaos theory. Well, there's certainly been a quite a few games this year that have involved that. Um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Oh well, it can't have been important. Yeah, if you can figure out what the date, what the, these numbers are, I don't know if they're dates or what, then uh, put your theory in the comments below. I think it's still too early. I wonder if it is like a, a log number. Um, but I tell you what, what is that? Oh, it's a bike pump. It reminds me of um, a film I watched recently, a horror film called The Banshee Chapter. Really highly recommend it. It's um, it's sort of a cross between found footage and I don't know, not found footage, <laughs> and it's about a journalist trying to find out about the disappearance of her friend. Um, and it's it it's yeah, it's really quite good. It's a B uh, an indie movie, so a little bit shaky at points, but the narrative it is genuinely fascinating, and. Um, 
But the creepy thing in it is that there are constantly uh, transmissions of numbers being read out in a voice similar to Kate there. And um, they just read out these numbers and then this like little ice cream jingle plays. And whenever you hear that, bad stuff happens. Like really bad stuff. It's like almost like they're transmitting a trigger um, through the numbers and the, the little jingle. Um, so it's quite... It's quite terrifying. So I'm, I'm quite scared to hear Kate's rather stern voice reading out these numbers. My good God, this is beautiful here, we isn't it? have to it? make a decision, Lizzie. Especially now. But I do love him, Father. I, I love them both. He's married. There are other people involved in this. Oh, I hardly think that anyone's in the position to claim the moral high ground, do you? Well, I take your point about Stephen and Robert, but I, I think Kate might see things differently. Do you? I mean, she's not screwing anyone else, pardon my French, but she spends all day and night locked up in that observatory. Stephen says they barely see each other. That's hardly a marriage, is it? So Stephen's married to Kate, and this girl Lizzie seems to uh, have a bit of a thing for Stephen. Right, so I found the source of that mobile that's in this car over here. Oh god, there's blood. It looks like whatever happened here, it was in a hurry. Visual and auditory distortions are becoming more frequent. Along with mild convulsions to the left side, all of which support a preliminary diagnosis of intracranial hypertension, occurring as a result of a substantial and rapidly expanding tumour, originating, I believe, within the hypothalamus. Cognitive functions are currently unimpaired, aside from this crippling headache. Hemorrhaging is becoming more frequent, with darker clots passing through the nasal passages primarily. I believe I am dying. This is certainly not 